Hey YouTube, it's Penny. wanted to bring you uh, a couple of things. Uh, so first of all, on June 6th, I heard the words, some of the things you've been shown are not true. So I woke up upon hearing this and asked the father if I had reported anything to the people that was not true. And he said, no, those are the things that you did not write down. So this was a huge comfort to me because there are many times when I am shown things and I, I don't, I, I feel like I, I don't wake up enough to write them down. Like I'm too tired. And, um, this was a, just a confirmation that some of the things I'm being shown, I'm not supposed to write down. Um, and I'm, and I'm not being a wicked and slothful servant like I was thinking that I was. Um, it's more that the spirit has been acting as like a filter for me. And so I'm not compelled to write down the things that are not true. So, you know, as I reflect on it, the, even though I don't understand the things that I'm shown by the father, um, always I'm, I'm compelled to write those things down. Um, so, all right. So I got John 16, 12 through 15. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. It's amazing. I've read John many times and I never saw that before. So um, on June 9th, I had a, a dream where I saw a mature woman, like in her 60s, and she said, we shouldn't listen to or fear the false prophets. And I said, no, we shouldn't. And then she said, but starting in the year zero, there will be many true prophets. Isn't that wonderful? And at that point, the scene shifted, and I was sitting on a couch with two other people. I don't know who they were. I looked up and saw a black praying mantis on the curtain, and it took a nosedive at me and woke me up. So back on March 2nd, I had a vision of what I thought initially was a praying mantis, but it turned out to be a locust. And we'll get that to, uh, get to that in a second here. So, um, first, first though, when I woke up from this dream, the first thing I thought about was that this woman had said, you know, the year zero, and the at last year's strategic perspectives conference um, that's put on by um, Quinnia House. Uh, the a Bible scholar Thomas Horn was there, and I've, I've mentioned him in previous videos, and he gave a presentation on transhumanism that he subtitled, Taking Man to the Next Level of Evolution, Human Enhancement Revolution, Beginning of the Hybrid Age. That's a very disturbing presentation. Um, so, And I only bring this up because it was during that presentation that Tom said that transhumanists refer to the year 2012, as year one. So I took this as a confirmation of the spirit being poured out in the last days um, on me in the year zero, which in this case would be 2011. Uh, so Joel 2:28 and 29 says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Um, so back during the fall holy days of 2011 was um, the first time that I heard, I heard angels singing uh, upon waking from a, a, a very vivid prophetic dream, and it was shortly after that, I don't know if it was the next night or a few nights later, I don't recall, that I had four really, you know, powerful visions in a row, and 
they, they really shook me up and I was so overwhelmed by them at the time that I begged the father to don't do this like stop I don't, I don't want this um, and it actually wasn't until several months later January of 2012 that I began to have dreams and visions and hear words from the Lord on a regular basis and then in February Abba instructed me to begin posting them on YouTube so okay back to the praying mantis um, so I okay so when it dive bombed me at the end of the dream so there have been many recent reports that I've been made aware of of uh, locust invasions both here in the United States and in other parts of the world including the Middle East um, so here I'm gonna just put in a, a short video about um, the vision that I had back on March 2nd called holding back the locust Okay, so a couple of scriptures, um, Joel 1, 2 through 4, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm has left, has the locust eaten. And that which the locust has left, has the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eaten. And then Revelation 9, 1 through 12. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless, bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given, and excuse me, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. And in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, and as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has the name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. King James language is sometimes a little tongue twisting. 
Okay. I, you know, there's been a lot of people speculate about the physical and the spiritual interpretations of Revelation chapter 9, and I, I don't believe that I'm qualified to give you my own interpretation. Um, but I, I do know that uh, something has been holding back the locusts, and I don't know if they've been released or if they're soon to be released. That wasn't revealed to me. Okay, so a couple of things. On June 12th, I walked had a dream where I walked into a room where David, my husband, was sitting at a desk, and something on the floor caught my eye, and I looked down at it, and it was this huge, huge frog that had been flattened. Um, it looked like David had taken like a phone book or something and just squashed it. Um, I was a bit repulsed by this, as most girls would be, and I looked at him for an explanation. <laughs> And he just shrugged, like, it's no big deal. Like, that's what you're supposed to do to frogs. And, I mean, my husband's a bit like Fair Girls from Survivor Man or that show. <laughs> so, of course, to him, he's like, what's your problem? <laughs> he's supposed to flatten those things. Anyway, and then, and I didn't really think anything about this dream, but then on June 15th, so uh, three days later, I heard the word frog legs. And I went, okay, okay, I got it. I'm supposed to talk about the frogs. Well, the interesting thing is, Frogs are actually only mentioned in scripture twice, in the Exodus and in Revelation. And they're mentioned by King David when he's in the Psalms, but he's he's mentioned them in the context of looking back to what happened in Exodus. So um, Exodus 8, 5 says, And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt, and Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And then Revelation 16, 13 through 14, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of El Shaddai to the battle of that great day. Okay, so interesting. In contrast to those who were tormented by the locusts and the frogs and all the other you know, plagues, um, we know that uh, from the book of Exodus that the Israelites in Goshen, which was a city of refuge, were not harmed by them. We further know that those with the seal of God will not be harmed by the coming plagues um, of locusts, whatever they are. Don't know what they are. So um, in Matthew 3 1 through 6, we read, In those days came Yochanan the Immerser, John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Yehuda, Judah, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet uh, Yeshua, Joshua, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Yahavah, make his path straight. And the same Yochanan, John, had his raiments or his clothing of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. And then, excuse me, then went out of him Yerushalayim, oh, sorry, then went out to him Yerushalayim and all Yehuda and all the region round about Jordan and were immersed of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Okay, so like David squashed that huge frog like a bug, here we see that John the Baptist actually ate locusts. And it reminded me of the scripture in Romans 16, 20, where it says, And the Elohim of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Squash him like a bug. And Luke 10, 19 through 20, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. So some of you have been a little confused. Some of you who are new to the channel, not understanding what that noise is. <laughs> it's the shofar. It's the trumpet that has a watchman on the wall. I have been instructed to sound, and here we go.
Shemai Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Amen.